So you have contact from native instruments, and you want to know how in the heck do you route multiple instruments, or something as simple as a drum sampler. So you can have full control that way instead of having a boring stereo MIDI drum track like this. You can have full control like this. By the end of this video, you'll know how to do just that in Pro Tools with Contact. Let's get into it. In Pro Tools, the first thing we need to do is pull up an instance of Contact. So I'm going to go ahead and click on an insert, and then I'm going to go to search, and I'm going to type in Contact. And we're going to select the stereo option. And just so you know, the stereo 5.1 doesn't add more output paths with Contact within Pro Tools, unfortunately. So let's click stereo. Now that we have an instance of Contact pulled up, we need to go and we need to make the output paths visible so we can make adjustments. On this upper menu right here, we're going to click on this icon, and we're going to hit outputs. And now we can see the default stereo output that Contact has a sign and now we're going to change that over here under outputs let's hit that plus sign now quantity is how many tracks we want to create and the number of channels is one channel would be a mono track two channels is stereo and then if you wanted surround sound 5.1 etc based on what type of instruments in this case we're doing a drum sampler and i know this drum sampler we're going to use we need 12 mono track and then we're going to go to the host output path and we're going to scroll down we see eight unassigned but we need 12 so we're going to go up to aux 3 and then we're going to go ahead and keep this ascending output assignment selected this is going to make all the tracks ascend and then we're going to delete existing channels before creating the new ones so we're going to check mark that and it's going to delete this one right here so now you see we have all the mono tracks in ascending order then we need to create two stereo outputs number of channels is two and then this time around instead of picking stereo one and two we're going to do aux one and we're not going to delete the pre-existing output hit okay and now we can see we have two stereo outputs. And before going any further, right now is the time to rename these output paths accordingly based on what you're doing. So if you have multiple contact instruments you're gonna be using, name the output paths based on which instrument you're gonna use, because if you don't do that now, later on it's gonna have the same output paths here and it can get really confusing. So I'm gonna go ahead and name it according to the drum shells that we're gonna assign when we pull up the Bover Shell drum library. So now we have all the output paths named, we're gonna go and select the library. When you're selecting libraries, if there is a multi option, do not select that. Just go to standard instrument and select the instrument. Great, so within this Bover Shell library, I'm gonna go to mix Mixer, and I'm going to go to kick one and I'm going to start assigning the outputs accordingly. Now that all the output paths are set accordingly, I'm going to press play and we want to see audio moving from these faders and then also down here at these output faders within contact. Everything seems to be working. The next part is we're going to go into Pro Tools and we're going to make the actual audio tracks where we're going to hear the audio back. So one thing to note with Pro Tools is it's a little bit different. We made two stereo tracks within Contact, but in Pro Tools, one of those stereo tracks will need to be two mono tracks. So we're going to create 14 mono tracks this go around and one stereo track. The next thing we want to do is set all the inputs to no input. That way we get no feedback as we're assigning things. So holding down Shift, Option, I'm going to hit and select no input and then scroll down and do the same thing for the stereo track. All right, and one last thing is I'm gonna rename the audio tracks the same names that I gave the output pass in contact. Now we wanna set the inputs. And if you remember, we set up those 12 mono inputs and then those two stereo. Now, if we scroll down to the overheads and we go to plugin and contact, we're gonna see stereo two, which is our overheads. We're gonna select that. Now that's done. The next part is we wanna select all these other tracks and real fast, just as a point of reference, remember how we had the eight unassigned? These are those right here. They're just named differently. And then we went and we selected the other ones as well. They're all right here. So what I want to do first is I want to go to kick one and I want to set everything up except for the room tracks for right now. Holding down shift option command, I'm going to go to input plugin and then remember eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I'm going to hit this right here and all the inputs are going to be set up in ascending order instead of me doing it one by one in Pro Tools. Now we still have room left and right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go select this channel right here, which is the left and this one is the right. And that's why we created those 14 mono tracks in Pro Tools. Can't pick another stereo track it's really lame but that's how you get that going and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select all hit input and when i press play we should hear everything back perfectly And now we can start pre-mixing each drum channel or we can even hit record and bring those tracks into our DAW and go from there. And if you've gotten this far and enjoyed the video and found it helpful, do us a favor and boop that like button below for the almighty YouTube algorithm. We'd greatly appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video.